So we were just introduced to the Toolspace palette found here within Civil 3D. And now I'd like to show you a little bit more within the Settings tab. The Settings tab is one of four tabs within the Toolspace palette. And Settings provides us not just with settings, which we'll take a look at in a minute, but also different types of styles. So for example, within Surface, if we click the little plus icon here, we have surface styles. But we also have label styles, table styles, and commands. Now these styles can contain many different styles within each type. So there's a lot of setup that goes on beforehand. Thankfully, Autodesk provides us with some great templates to start with. But besides the styles, the settings control the default settings, and there is a bit of hierarchy in those settings. So if we right click on the drawing name, we get some options for our defaults. Let's go ahead and click on Edit Drawing Settings. Now there are many different controls to the drawing settings, one of which is the scale, which is associated of course to the annotative scale found here down at the bottom and the coordinate system that's associated with the drawing, which is found right here. More than that, we have object layers. Go ahead and click on that tab. As we create an alignment, for example, begin to really consider that these civil 3D objects are very smart and dynamically controlled blocks. When you create a block, it may have a line and a circle and a square and each one of those objects have their own layers. But when you insert the block definition into the drawing, the entire block is associated to a layer as well. So everything is encapsulated within a block. And so when we create an alignment, by default our alignment will automatically go to this layer called C-Util-Align and then the subcomponents may find themselves on different layers all controlled by the style so that's how an alignment is encapsulated so the object layers really apply to the overall big picture object that we're working with now let's take a look at the abbreviations tab now when we're labeling our alignments for example we can control how the station labels show up on our alignment, especially the abbreviations. So take a look at alignment beginning point. Right now it's abbreviated with the letters BP. We can change that though if we hover over this area, click these three dots. Instead of BP, let's put in begin. We can put anything we want and then say for an alignment endpoint we can change that too rather than EP we can type in end so again we have control over all of these labels that show up in our alignment additionally you have ambient settings go ahead and click that tab ambient settings are similar to the units found within an AutoCAD drawing. And you have those units still here because we're working on top of AutoCAD. In AutoCAD there are linear units, architectural units, decimal units, etc. that are set to a determined precision. Civil 3D takes this a step further by requiring more information. As you can see right here it's a pretty long list. Elevations, for example, can be set to a specific unit or a specific precision. Stations need to be set to a certain unit or a certain precision. Are you working in the United States or the metric system? Grades and slopes need a format to work with. Now does that format require renderize 
or rise to run. So when it asks for information on a slope, I can type in 3 and it knows I mean 3 to 1, not 3%. Now in this panel, we aren't changing the precision of the drawing itself. We're controlling the way the Civil 3D commands function. Ambient settings are the parent hierarchy. Now when we right click on a particular feature, we can edit the feature settings. But before we do that, let's click the plus icon next to general. We see a folder called label styles. When we maximize this folder, we have an additional list of folders for general items such as lines and shapes. Right click on one of these folders. We can set the label style defaults for the drawing. Now each category of Civil 3D feature settings can be modified by right clicking and clicking Edit Feature Settings. Let's right click on the surface. We can see ambient settings that are actually reading from the drawing settings. If we override any of these settings in this panel, they will be specific to surfaces. What if I want a certain style applied to a surface and set as my default? It's nice to have these defaults set for us ahead of time. Now feature settings can control how profiles are created. Within this panel there are a lot of other settings such as say passing eye height. We can set that right here. Headlight angle and so on that are specific to profiles. These feature settings give you very specific control over how Civil 3D will use ambient settings to create these features. Lastly, there is another level within our hierarchy for each feature folder list called Commands. When we right click on Command Settings, they are reading the ambient settings for the feature. Remember that the feature ambient settings are reading from the drawing settings we set originally. So the Settings tab within the Tool Space panel is what we use to control how our drawings look and perform the way it should. Once the defaults are set, they should speed up the efficiency of our work. If you're working for a company, they should have a template established for you. Autodesk has some good templates right out of the box and it's very useful and efficient to have a template set up to get you up and running with Civil 3D.